The Enrichment Center is required to remind you that you will be baked, and then there will be cake. Have you ever dreamt that you could explore spaces that defy the laws of physics? That you could fall endlessly, or that you could walk on any surface? Well, today in the pantry, we will explore that fantasy. And no, we're not talking about Portal. Welcome back to the Game Dev Pantry, a series where we retro-engineer interesting mechanics in the Unreal Engine. Don't forget that you can always grab the project following the link in the description. The mechanic of gravity switching has long been part of the video game world. It feeds into a fantasy of limitless exploration and boundless realms. However, it has rarely been explored in an Escher-esque world filled with architectural nonsense. Manifold Gardens is an amazing puzzle platformer that is like solving a Rubik's Cube, only from the inside. Hey, holy cow! So... <laughs> to recreate the game's core experience, we will focus on two aspects. The gravity switching and the changing environment. We decided to start with a blank project and to create our own pawn to enable us to code the movement of the character to behave exactly like we wanted. This method requires more work, but allows for more control overall. We will start by coding our own gravity, by applying a constant force towards the current surface the pawn is on, and by disabling the regular gravity. With this, our character can now fall. Hello there. Once that's done, we will code our own movement by creating a forward-backward axis and a left-right axis. We will then apply a force corresponding to the player input. To create the effect of a maximum walk speed, we will cease to apply the force at a velocity threshold, and then reapply it again if we are under that threshold. Now, one tricky part of the controller is that we don't want it to rotate naturally due to a certain emergence in the physics. But we do want it to rotate via player input and the gravity switch mechanic. We've searched through the pantry for many moons until we found exactly the spice we needed to complete our recipe. We bring you this recipe's secret ingredient, but to do so, we shall dig deep into the physics setting of the capsule and grab the holy grail of physics recipe. A little something called the inertia tensor scale. You'll want to really buff these numbers to completely cancel possible rotation. We will then want to bind rotation input to capsule rotation. For this we will create two new axes, one for looking up-down and one for looking left-right. We then create a simple function to feed the input into the rotation. While left and right rotates the actual capsule, up and down only rotates the camera. The first layer of the character is now cooked. Before going any further, we will need to prepare the plate on which to lay the beautiful meal that is our recipe. The environment in Manifold Gardens switches color depending on the player's current gravity direction. The effect is used for different purposes, but most notably for an easier understanding of the complex puzzles. To recreate this environment, we will make use of a creative and much more simple solution than what we think the developer probably used. This solution has its limits though, but it'll be perfect for demonstrating a few things in the Unreal Engine. For this we will create a block blueprint that will be covered with six different planes. To be able to scale the planes uniformly, depending on which face of the cube they cover, they must have a different base rotation. To do so, we exported the Unreal Basic plane and then re-imported it three times, each with a different base rotation. This makes it so that each pair of plane components that our blueprint cube has actually uses a different static mesh. Then, each plane will be topped with a different colored glazing. To do so, we will create a master material for each plane so that they can share the same basic settings. We then create instances of this material with a color parameter that changes between each instance. And then, we put the appropriate material instance on each component. We will also want the material to fade in between the original color and the unique color, and vice versa. For this, we will create a parameter called activation. This parameter will be changed dynamically from 0 to 1, or from 1 to 0, to create the fading effects. So, on the Blocks Begin Play event, we will create a dynamic material instance for each plane that can be manipulated at runtime. We will add a component tag to each plane corresponding to its color. 
This way, it'll be easier to identify later via line trace. And finally, we will create a simple function that allows the block to fade between the two colors. The old color will fade away and the new one will appear. The color's identity will be linked to an enum for later purposes. Now onto the hardest part of this recipe, which is clearly the gravity switch mechanic, but it is also probably the reason you're interested. The first thing we'll do is to start by determining if the player can switch between two gravities. To do so, we will be using a line trace that looks for a component tag on one it hits. We then set up a map variable containing every possible wall tag. These colors will be linked to the enum we set up earlier. If the line trace detects a tag contained in the map, it will allow the player to switch gravity as long as it's not the color that the player is currently on. If the conditions aren't met, the player won't be able to activate the gravity switch. To make things clearer for the player, the dev created a small crosshair indicating if you can't switch, and if you can, what color is the wall you can switch on. To reproduce this effect, we create a simple widget with a square image in the middle. Using our detection function, we will change the color of the square. White indicates that no switch is possible, while a color indicates that a switch can be done. When a switch is possible, the player input will fire a function that slowly rotates and translates the player towards the targeted spot. To determine the new desired rotation, we will use the normal of the new surface and the current gravity direction to create a rotation axis on which we will rotate our capsule. To avoid any complications, we will disable the input from the player as well as collisions and physics simulation on the capsule for the duration of the transition. We will hijack the same function to allow the switch of the color of the wall using the function we created earlier. It is also at this moment that we will change the direction of the gravity to match that of the new surface. We then fire a looping function that will slowly interpolate between the old position and the new one. Once the transition is finished, we reactivate the input, physics simulation and collision. So there you go. You now have a crispy, tasty, mind-bending mechanic that you can share with all your friends. In the game, each wall color is associated with sound. So we ripped those sounds from the game and imported them into the Unreal Engine. These sounds will play when the player starts a gravity switch corresponding to the wall color they are switching to. To experiment with an actual level, we will need to create levels using our cube blueprint. We will place a few blocks left and right and use the scale transform to create the shapes we want. For this level design, it is really important that we don't rotate the blocks so that the planes don't get all mixed up. After a few minutes of level editing, you can have a simple level that could look like this. So that was it for this week. Hope you enjoyed this particular recipe. If you like the content, feel free to share with your friends, like or subscribe. If you need anything else, ask away in the comments, and don't forget that the project is in the description. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next month.